Hello, hello. Um, thank you so much. Um, wow. Um, Elder Rakan, Elder, Elder Lawyer, you have changed my life. And I just want to say thank you so much and may the Most High Blessing keep you. Um, thank you. Pra all praise be to the Most High. Um, 90 seconds. I, I see they preach that um, white people cannot be saved. Okay. Can you speak a little bit about that? Um, like, what is GOCC's um, doctrine regarding that? Okay, what is GOCC's doctrine concerning whether or not white people can be saved, correct? Correct. Okay. They say that they cannot. Okay, yeah. Not only Fixing. them, and I'm glad you, you highlighted that. Not only them, UPK said the same thing. And it's also what I taught when I was under the doctrine of school of UPK, then what? Church of UPK in the early 90s. So grab your Bible real quick, sister. Got it. I need you to read Acts okay. 15. And I need you to read Acts 15 and 14. All the way down to 17. 15 and 14. Okay. All the way to 17. Go on. Okay. Now your head is covered? Simeon has a clear. Uh, yes, sir. I got it. Okay. Go on. Simeon has declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a, couple, a, a people for his name. Okay, let's stop and there. A, so we all know okay. that that was Cornelius who met Peter, right? Yes. So why did the Most High allow the doctrine to be accepted, to allow the doctrine to be conveyed to Peter? To take out from among the Gentiles a people for his name, correct? Correct. Go on. Verse 15, and to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Now... I want you to see something else that Peter understood. Read the 18th verse. Known unto God all his works from the beginning of the world. So the Most High had a plan for all of the nations before the world began, right? Right. So let's see the plan. This particular these particular verses you read are being read from the prophets. Prophet Amos. And let's give it context. Let's go to the book of Amos, if you will. Let me know when you're there. Okay. Because this is what the disciples were reading. Yes, you're there? Start in yes. the start in the eleventh verse. Which chapter? Nine and eleven. Amos nine eleven. In that day. Okay. Amos nine and eleven. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins. And I will build it as in the days of old. Stop there. Now, as you can see, this is the exact quote that the disciples were quoting from, right? Yeah. Raise up the tabernacle of David, which means the 12 tribes will be one again like it once was under David. Read. Verse 12. 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. Same thing. Now it goes into the names that you don't see in Acts 15 that's, that are saved. 
that he's going to raise up the tabernacles of David that was ruined, bring them together, 12 tribes, to do what? That they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathens which are called by my name. These are Gentiles who have accepted the truth of Christ, like Cornelius. Saith the Lord that doeth this. Now you understand the plan from the beginning of the world. Now here's a question. If, if Edomites aren't saved, how are they fulfilling the 12th verse? How will Israel possess Edom and the remnant of the Gentiles who's going to serve Israelites in the kingdom if they're not saved? Wow. Can't be. Huh? Huh? The remnant of Edom, sister, have to be saved to fulfill this prophecy, right? Right. <laughs> so in order for this to have actually been applied to Christ, to Peter's ministry, the Most High had to set a scenario through Cornelius to meet Peter so that this scripture can be fulfilled. So that the doctrine that was once strictly for Israelites could be what? Can be could be open so that the Gentiles can do their part in the kingdom to serve. Well, they're not going to serve if they don't convert, and they're not going to convert unless the teachers, like Peter did, teach them. Another distinction between those who are in Christ and other Israelite groups out there. Does it get any clearer than that? I'm asking you, is it clear? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. No, I'm asking you, do you understand? Do you understand that the Gentiles must be saved in order for them to fulfill the prophecies concerning them? Do you yes. understand that? Yes. Now, you sure? Because I'm hearing some uncertainty there. Uncertainty there. <laughs> oh no no I'm sure I'm sure okay I'm glad to hear this because I've been I've been um, following you guys for a few months now and I have quite a, a, a bit of um, Caucasian friends and um, well your Caucasian friends been sister, really concerning me. no your Caucasian friends are fine they, they have they have to prepare themselves for the world to come to and we're the teachers to actually help them understand let me tell you sister all knees shall bow and all tongues confess every nation will know our lord mm -hmm. we're here to present that god to the world that god and son who've been hidden that's the job of a teacher now another thing go to the book of obadiah if you will Okay. And I'm going to show you here. Where, they, where, where their confusion comes in at. Right? This is where they get confused at. And I taught this too when I was under them. But, you know, I was erring not knowing the scriptures like they are now. Okay? When you go into the Obadiah 1 and 9, it says... And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. This is the scripture that they use to claim that Esau can't be saved. Right? Right. And also the one that says that, you know, um, Jacob, I love that Esau, I hate it. Okay, Esau, I have I hate it. But what about the remnant that are called by mm -hmm. Christ's name? That remnant right. isn't counted for the judgment of wicked Esau. The same way the wickedness of our forefathers isn't counted against us. See? Mm -hmm. So when it says right here, Esau yeah. may be cut off by slaughter, what they are forgetting here is the fact that there's a remnant out of Esau called by the Most High's name that will be spared. So they'll just use this scripture out of context. 
And this is only talking about the hierarchy of Esau. Like those who are in position who reject Christ till this day. They will be destroyed who are Amalek. That's not all of Esau. Now they say, when they use the book of Malachi, right? What do they say? They say, well, we can hate Esau because God hates Esau, right? Right? Yes. Okay. Right. Let's get it. Thou shalt not abhor Edomite. What's that? Deuteronomy? Hold on. 23. And 23. Seven. Yeah, 23 and 7. Go to Deuteronomy 23 and 7, sister. And you know what? There's a judgment for their wicked doctrine, too. And they don't have to worry about me. They have to worry about Christ. Go to Deuteronomy 23 and 7 and read this. Okay. Read it. Deuteronomy 23 and 7. Come on. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Okay, let's break it Thou down now. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian. Now, let's, let's break it down. Now, you're talking about a contradiction here. I hate Esau. I hate Esau. I, hate Edom. I can hate an Edomite. God, David hated Edomite. And, and the most I loved him with a perfect hatred. David had a perfect, perfect hatred for Esau. It sounded all good. But what they're going to do is get themselves on terrorist lists mm -hmm. for their madness. Let me read it here. Abhor. Abhor means, sister, to what? Abhor means, and let me put it here for everyone else. Abhor means... To loathe. That is to detest. Right? That's a form of hate. Right. Right? But the Bible says, what? 23 and 7. Read it again. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. Thou shalt not hate an Edomite. That's a commandment from the book of Moses. That's another scripture that have them fumbling. And then they'll look at it and say, well, in other texts, it means something else. Nah, don't even go there. All right, we, don't, we ain't trying to hear that. It goes against your hatred. Read. For he is thy brother. Read. For he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. So we have to give respect for, to, to the Egyptians. For giving us refuge at a time we needed. Before the Most High gave us the land of Canaan, which was turned to Israel. So, sister, what they're teaching is bogus. And it's another uh, delineating line to show you the difference between those Israelites who are in Christ and the rest. You got it? Amen. Yes, sir. There you go. Welcome home. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited.